following may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Clarendon taxi driver charged after abducting 13-year-old girl. A Clarendon man has been arrested by investigators after allegedly abducting a 13-year-old girl and attempting to sexually assault her in an area known as Darkness in Kellett's district in the parish on Friday, October 16th. Accused is 40-year-old Donald Thompson, a taxi operator of Corners District, Cross Hill, Clarendon. Reports are that about 11.50 a.m., the complainant boarded a car being driven by Thompson. Thompson allegedly pulled off the main road and took the teen to an area where he attempted to assault her, but she managed to escape. The police were summoned and Thompson was pointed out to them. He was subsequently arrested and charged with assault with intent to rape and abduction of a person under 16 years. His court date is being finalized, the police said. 18-year-old charged with murder after fatal shooting in Mountain View. Kingston Eastern Police have charged a man with murder following the shooting death of 26-year-old Siobhan Hall at Hall's Mountain View Avenue home on Saturday, October 3rd. 18-year-old Jamarley Palmer, otherwise called Ziggy, of Mountain View Avenue, has been charged with murder, conspiracy to murder, illegal possession of firearm and ammunition in connection with the incident. Reports are that about 8.30 p.m., Palmer went to Hall's house and made a demand of Hall. When the demand was not met, Palmer allegedly opened gunfire, hitting Hall. The police were summoned and Hall was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Palmer was subsequently arrested and taken into custody during an operation on Tuesday, October 13th and charged on Wednesday, October 21st. His court date is being finalized. Teen held at hospital after taxi driver survives brutal attack and robbery attempt. A teenage boy has been arrested and charged with robbery with aggravation and wounding with intent following an incident on Spanish Town Road in Kingston on Saturday, August 29th. Reports from the Hunts Bay Police are that about 2.15 p.m., the now complainant was operating a Toyota Altis motor car as a taxi when two men posing as passengers entered the vehicle. On reaching a section of Spanish Town, one of the men allegedly brandished a knife and held it at the complainant's neck and started making demands. A struggle ensued among the three men and the complainant was stabbed. In an attempt to flee the scene, one of his attackers reportedly ran across the road into the path of an oncoming vehicle and was hit. The other attacker escaped from the scene. The complainant made a report to the Hunts Bay Police who immediately launched an investigation. The complainant was assisted to the hospital for treatment, and while there, he reportedly saw the accused at the facility and pointed him out to the police. The teen who was at the hospital to receive treatment for injuries was arrested and subsequently charged. His identity is being withheld pending further investigations by the police. Ward of State aces nine CSEC subjects. Last week, the Child Protection and Family Services Agency announced that this is a historic year for them after a record number of wards became eligible for universities. And top of the lot is star performer Ainsley Roden, who picked up nine subjects this year to complete grade 11 with 14 CSEC subjects. The former B.B. Coke High School student bagged seven distinctions, another seven credits and a solitary pass. And if that was not enough, he added two city and gills and NCT VET in electrical to his high school parting achievement. Roden, who was admitted to having doubts before his last month's results, shared his joyous experience in finding out he has aced them all, especially English. 
To be honest, because of the whole coronavirus situation and school was out, I was having doubts, especially with English. I'm the type of person that learns better with face-to-face -face where I can interact with the teacher. I was coming from work tired and thing in the evening but had to see the results. The first thing I looked at was English. Immediately, I started to smile. At the time, my co-workers who were walking beside me said, That text sweet you though. But they didn't know. I was so excited and relieved, Roden said. Roden is happy he was able to again make the persons who believed in him proud. Being in a facility like the Manning's Boys Home in St. Elizabeth posed quite a challenge for Roden to study while at home, but he was resilient and determined to do well. Mother found naked in the street after lockdown with her daughter's head in a plastic bag. A loving mother who was found naked in a street with her daughter's severed head in a plastic bag will not be jailed. Tatiana Payanova, 38, a cleaner, did not realize her actions in the lockdown stabbing and beheading of her adored only child Christina, 13, a court ruled. At the time, her shocked neighbors in Ukrainian city Kharkiv said her macabre actions were totally out of character. A naked Payanova was detained in Kharkiv city in April brandishing a knife in one hand and holding a plastic bag containing the severed head of her teenage daughter in the other. The body of her daughter had 20 stab wounds in the macabre killing. The mother had been suspected of premeditated murder of a child, a crime with a penalty of life imprisonment. Now a court has ruled that the tragic mother was suffering from a chronic mental illness, which made it impossible for her to realize her actions. Prosecutor spokesman Dmitry Chubank said, the court decided to forcibly hospitalize the woman in a strict regime psychiatric clinic. If treatment is successful, she will be eligible for release. A neighbor said the mother and daughter were close. Payanova would move a mountain for the girl, said one. The neighbor said, they went on holiday together, they cooked for each other. Tatiana always attended all school events. One woman who knew the family said, I don't believe that Tatiana could do that. I don't believe it. A law enforcement statement said at the time, when they arrived at the scene, police found a citizen in an inadequate condition. In one hand, she held a knife. In the other, a package containing a severed female head. The woman refused to explain anything to police officers. Pope's shocking statement on gay marriage is causing an uproar among Catholics. Pope Francis recently revealed his support for gay civil unions breaking from Catholic tradition. Advocacy groups have applauded the stance. Following Pope Francis' announcement declaring support for civil union laws for same-sex couples, which breaks with traditional Catholic values that oppose homosexual relationships, the leader has garnered both criticism and support from people all around the world. Most recently, NBC reports that retired Philippine Bishop Arturo Bastez commented that he had very serious doubts about the moral correctness of the Pope's stance on legalizing gay relationships. This is a shocking statement coming from the Pope, Bastez said in a cell phone message Thursday, according to the Associated Press and NBC. I am really scandalized by his defense of homosexual union, which surely leads to immoral acts. Pope Francis's comments occurred in a documentary about his life titled Francesco, which premiered in Rome. In the film, the pontiff said that gay individuals are children of God and have a right to a family. Nobody should be thrown out or be made miserable because of their sexuality. While the leader of the Catholic Church expressed his support for gay civil unions, other branches of the church remain adamant in the traditional Catholic values. On Wednesday, following the announcement, Bishop Thomas Tobin of the Diocese of Providence, Rhode Island, stated that Pope Francis's comments are in diametrical opposition to the Church's stance on same-sex unions. 
The church cannot support the acceptance of objectively immoral relationships, Tobin wrote. Individuals with same-sex attraction are beloved children of God and must have their personal human rights and civil rights recognized and protected by law. However, the legalization of their civil union, which seek to simulate holy matrimony, is not admissible. Similarly, Brian Birch, the president of Catholic Vote, told AP that the Catholic definition of marriage is exclusively between a man and a woman, and that Pope Francis has no ability to change that teaching about the permanence and exclusivity of marriage. Advocacy organizations supporting LGBTQ rights have, in contrast, applauded the Pope's stance. By shifting Catholic theology in a more inclusive direction and making clear that LGBTQ people have a right to their own families, Pope Francis is letting LGBTQ Catholics know that being a person of faith and being LGBTQ are not mutually exclusive. Human Rights Campaign President Alfonso David said, While we are at the Human Rights Campaign, acknowledge this moment. We continue to push the Catholic Church and all religious leaders to fully embrace LGBTQ people and endorse marriage equality for same-sex couples or right to have families and to be full members of our faith communities. Pope Francis was previously the Archbishop of Buenos Aires and a Cardinal before being elected as Pope by the College of Cardinals.